US aid strengthens Ukraine's defenses, but Trump could ruin everything. Ukraine faced a shortage of ammunition when problems with US military aid arose, allowing the Russian occupation army to gain minor victories at the front. The situation worsened after American aid was restored to the Ukrainian army. The Washington Post reports that British intelligence estimates that Russia's casualties in May, an average of more than 1,200 soldiers killed and wounded a day, were the highest of the war. Overall, estimates of Russian casualties range from at least 350,000 killed and wounded to more than 500,000 killed and wounded. That's more soldiers than Russia has lost in all its other wars combined since 1945. The biggest threat to Ukraine and its military is Russian air attacks. At the NATO summit, the Allies announced that they would send dozens of new air defense systems to Ukraine, including at least four Patriot batteries. Negotiations are underway with Israel to transfer eight older Patriot batteries. F-16 fighters from the Netherlands and Denmark are also expected to help the Ukrainians. It would also be helpful if current US President Joe Biden allowed the Ukrainian armed forces to use American weapons systems to strike Russian air bases. Despite Ukraine's improved prospects, Vladimir Putin has made it clear that he is not interested in a ceasefire. So far, the Russian dictator has failed to undermine Western support for Kyiv, but that could change if Donald Trump wins the US election. Trump continues to promise to end the war before his inauguration, which likely means forcing Ukraine to hand over territory to Russia or risk cutting off American aid. If the United States cuts off aid to Ukraine, Russia's further advance will be inevitable. Europe will not be able to provide Kyiv with everything it needs. However, if Washington continues to supply aid, the Ukrainian army will be able to hold its ground, remaining on the defensive but using every opportunity to counter-attack. After a year of stalemate, things may look different and some form of ceasefire, formal or informal, may be possible, said Eugene Rumer, a former US national intelligence official who worked on Russia and Eurasia. Existing channels of communication or informal understandings could lead to a more structured dialogue about something more formal, like a real ceasefire. Then both sides would begin to frantically prepare for the next war. A frozen conflict is not an ideal scenario, but it is better than a Russian victory. And it is the likely outcome if Trump and his Republicans cut off aid to Ukraine, which would be one of the most unforgivable mistakes in the history of American foreign policy.